Hi people, as a continuation of the Unplugged Guide series, here comes the first dungeon guide, the Theatre of Pain. Unlike most other dungeon guides, I'll be more oriented around the trash than the bosses. We'll go through the dungeon pole by pole, and I'll mention pretty much everything that you need to know to not mess up. The dungeon is a Necrolord one, so within it you'll find three banners which will give your entire party 10% versatility and speed for 5 minutes. The Ritualist can cast Unholy Fervor, which causes an enemy to heal for 6% whenever they deal damage. Interrupt the cast or purge or dispel the buff. The Unyielding Contestant can Enrage, which causes their damage output to increase quite a bit. They can also charge a random player. That player does not receive any damage on the charge, but anyone standing in line of the charge will take a big hit. So therefore, don't stand in front of anyone on the first pull. As for the ghosts on the Spiritful Weak, they lose health over time, so if possible, just crowd control them and run ahead. If you have ice on top of you and a ghost is red, that means that the ghost is charging you. The Raging Bloodhorn can cast Tantrum. It has a very short cast time, maybe 0.25 seconds. The ability then deals a pulsating AoE damage and it counts as an Enrage, so Chank Shot or Soothe It or whatever. On higher keys, a full channel of that ability will likely wipe your group. The first boss encounter is actually a squad and not a trio. Occasionally, a rogue will appear out of stealth and stun a player for 10 seconds, dealing massive damage during that duration. If you don't crowd control the rogue, that player will very likely die. Desya the warrior has 5 abilities, of which 4 are noteworthy. She might enrage, which gives her a big shield for 30 seconds. This can be tranked or soothed. It's also during this enrage that she will cast Fixate, which causes her to chase down a targeted player for 10 seconds. However, like I said, removing the shield will interrupt the Fixate. She will also cast Mortal Strike on the tank, which deals damage and reduces healing received by 30% for 10 seconds. Sethel the Accursed has 5 abilities, 3 of which are noteworthy. One with Death will give him a 30% of his total health as a shield. Searing Death will give a random player a small circle around them, which causes allies within that circle to take shadow damage. And finally, Spectral Transference, which will heal a random ally whenever a damaging spell or ability is casted by Sethel. Finally, Passeron has one important ability throwing a vial of genetic alteration at a player, which causes the player to spawn a pool of noxious spores every 8 seconds. Don't stand in the spores. Usually you kill Sathol, then Desia, and then Passeron. When they shield, you can either burn through the shield or damage another target while waiting for the shield to fall off, as the shield only lasts for 30 seconds. After you've jumped down, it doesn't matter too much which way you go first. Usually, the Lich section of the dungeon poses the biggest challenge, and if you're only interested in timed runs, that's a good place to start, as that is where most runs will fail. Here, we're going Halls of Might first anyway. The first pack is nothing special and there's nothing to mention. Nectara has three abilities, all quite obvious. Interrupting Roar deals damage and interrupts any cast for a few seconds. Standing within the circle causes you to take damage. Standing within the Whirlwind also deals damage. She gives you 7% of the total percentage. The first banner is right behind her, and you should probably use that straight away. He even has similar abilities. Don't stand on the ground smash. Tank might get hit by Colossus smash, increasing his damage received for 10 seconds. This mob gives 8%. The next pack deals a lot of damage. Single target focus the Ancient Captain. This mob decreases nearby mobs damage taken by AoE by 75% and increases their damage dealt by 25%. This skelly boy also costs a moralizing shout, reducing damage you do by 50%. The archers will also shoot at a random player, dealing quite a bit of damage. Advent Nevermore can cast Ricocheting Blade, which will bounce to players within 5 yards and apply a dot. The rest is pretty obvious. It gives 
Sav is pretty straightforward. The fight has a damage check through oppressive barrier. This barrier applies a stack in slow, which will make Sav's AoE abilities unescapable. His shout also interrupts cast and silences that spell of school for a few seconds. Move out of the green. The two players that are thrown down must kill each other. Don't pop any defensive there, just quickly decide who should burst down the other one. As soon as one dies, or well, falls down to 1% HP or 1 HP, they're gonna be thrown back up. This ability will only target DPS, but if you only have one DPS alive, it will target the healer and that DPS. Next comes the Barrow of Carnage, or the Abomination boss section. The banner is right at the entrance to the right. Be careful not pulling too much within the first room. The Deceased Horror applies a health reducing disease, as well as casting Bone Shield on itself. Interrupt that cast and don't stand within the green stuff. Make sure not to stack on the small ones as they leap to a random player and does a cleave within 4 yards around that player. The big boy, the Butcher, can cast Devour Flesh, which deals damage and heals him for 300% of the damage dealt. I don't think he can be stunned and it can't be interrupted. The Blighted Boy sleeps around as well, so don't stack. They can also cast Withering Discharge, which deals a decent amount of damage to everyone and applies the Disease debuff as well. So interrupt that. The Disease debuff, Withering Blight, reduces damage and healing done by the player by 20% per stack. Healers should dispel themselves first. Either you take that pack alone, or be careful to interrupt them whenever you can if you take several packs at once. The next pack is just a Butcher and Blighters again. Next you go either left or right, regardless you're facing a rancid gas bag. They smell so bad it hurts, and they also shoot green goo out of their bodily openings, so stand to the sides and don't stand in front, don't stand behind. You can skip these pretty easily though, and that's what most runs are gonna do. The next pack is simply a combination of mobs faced earlier, so the same rules apply. Beware of the ghouls leaping out of the wall. Some of these ghouls can apply the disease, so things can get bad fast. Try and take this pack alone and not combine it with the next pack, which is another rancid gas bag. Finally, the two last mobs is a butcher and the bone shield guy. Gorshup is pretty simple. He spawns two leapers, so don't stack. Make sure to kill them to not get overwhelmed by the leap damage. Whenever they die, they leave goo on the ground, which slows you down. Right before meat hook, he pulls everyone to him and casts Thunderizing Smash. Make sure not to tank the boss on top of the goo, as people might get slowed and not make it out of the AoE casts, which is pretty much a guaranteed death on higher keys. Getting caught on the hooks will deal damage, silence you, and carry you over to the edge of the room, so try and avoid that. With that, we're moving on to the Lich and the Altars of Agony section. Here, the banner is just to the left, right as you enter the Altars of Agony. In the first section, the boss rains down bolts at you. These deal massive damage, so don't get hit. The Shackled Souls can only bind your soul, which slows you down and deal damage. This might mean you can get caught in the bolts without being able to move out of them because of this slow, so you want to make sure to pull these souls out of that passage. Usually you take the first half backwards and then the other half forwards. The trash in the portal section of the dungeon is difficult and can easily lead to a wipe. Right after the second shackled souls pull, you face a portal guardian. These will cost a soul storm, dealing large AoE damage over time, so make sure to have high health before pulling that mob. Whenever you use a portal, your health will be fully restored, so there's no need to heal when the mobs are dead. Now depending on which path you take, you will face slightly different packs. I don't know which way is the best, if there even is a best way. Let's just go with the way we're going here. The caster, the, mani the ma maniacal, the maniacal soulbinder, can cast necrotic bolt, which deals damage and absorbs healing. He can also cast necrotic bolt volley, which is the exact same thing except a volley. And finally, soul corruption, a hard hitting dot. All of these abilities are difficult to deal with, so make sure to interrupt. Note that this mob is humanoid and not undead. The next pack is very hard. 
Besides the Portal Guardian and the Maniac Soulbinder, you also face a Bone Mages. These can cast shields on themselves to absorb incoming attacks, which however can be perched or dispelled. You can also cast Grave Spike, which hits decently hard on a single target, as well as Bone Spear, which deals lethal damage. Always interrupt the Bone Spear, but try and not waste interrupts on the Grave Spikes. Also, make sure to always interrupt Necrotic Bolt Volley, and if possible, the Necrotic Bolt as well. Also dispel the Shield on the Mages, and the Dot from the Maniac. As for the Guardian's Storm, just do what you can to survive it. Next comes the Nefarious Dark Speakers. They can cast Death Winds, which will push people off the platform. Try and have an above point of view with your camera, so that you can see where they are facing, and thus avoiding the tornado. They can also cast Curse of Desolation, which causes you to spawn erupting pools beneath you. These will deal damage and fear you for a second. Just move out of the pools and decurs if possible. Finally, you have a pack with a Maniac, a Mages, and a Dark Speaker. Make sure to interrupt the Bone Spear and the Necrotic Volley. Also, try to get the Necrotic Bolts and dispel the Dots. Also, avoid getting pushed off by the Speaker and don't stand in the Purple Pool. This, and one of the previous packs, with the Mage, Guardian and Maniac, is the reason why this part of the dungeon is the hardest one. The boss itself though is not too complicated, but if done wrong it will be hard for the healer at least. Phantasmal Parasite will apply a dot to two players, which ticks for a lot of damage. Dispel as soon and as much as you can. Uh, for a priest, for example, you should use Mass Dispel to dispel both of the dots whenever possible, and then prioritize dispelling classes without too much damage mitigation or low health. The boss will spawn Grasping Hands on the ground, don't stand in them unless you get targeted by Draw Soul. These hands will catch your soul, allowing you to quickly get back to it. While you're standing within the hands and you're without a soul, you will take ticking damage. I'm not sure whether it's enough to stand just behind the hands, or if you need to stand within them. Just play it safe and stand within. If you didn't use the banner for the Lich section, you can now use it for the final boss instead. Simply go to the portal in the middle and move up now. The final boss has a number of abilities, one which only activates at 50%. Because of that ability, it's often recommended to use Bloodlust at 50% to spend as little time as possible in that phase of the encounter. Anyway, Dark Devastation pushes people back and deals a lot of damage. Make sure to stand quite close to the boss so you have a chance to run away from it. Grasping Hands will pull players into itself, and if you get caught you will get stunned and take a lot of damage. Manifest Death will spawn circles around you that explode, dealing damage and spawning in adds. Make sure not to stand too close to each other, and then AoE down the adds quickly. Finally, at 50%, she will spawn either Spectral Riders or Spectral Fighters. The Fighters will cause an AoE damage around themselves, and the Riders will ride straight across the field, basically killing anyone they will hit, at least on a higher key. And so, that was the Theater of Pain Dungeon. Best of luck, like and to subscribe, I'll be back soon with another video and until then, see ya!